This lesson is on the signs and symptoms of gastric or stomach cancer. So we're going to talk about the signs and symptoms that are most common for stomach cancer, why they occur, and also some of the signs and symptoms that occur with metastases of stomach cancer. Before we talk about those signs and symptoms, let's talk about what stomach cancer is. So stomach cancer or gastric cancer is going to be a cancer of the stomach. So it's going to involve a cancerous mass in the stomach or in the tissues of the stomach. Now, stomach cancer is often going to be a late presenting cancer, meaning that it's only going to present to healthcare providers in a later stage. Oftentimes in earlier stages of gastric cancer, the signs and symptoms are going to be mild or insignificant. So that's important when we talk about the signs and symptoms later. There are multiple types of stomach cancer. The most common type is going to be gastric adenocarcinoma. And the other types include gastric lymphoma, gastrointestinal or GI stromal tumor, and gastric carcinoid cancer. There are multiple risk factors for getting gastric cancer. Each risk factor is associated with a particular type of cancer. Now, we won't get into those details here if you want more information on the specific details of risk factors and the particular types of cancer that they cause, please check out my full in-depth overview lesson on gastric cancer. But the risk factors in general for getting gastric cancer include long-term consumption of smoked foods, so foods with nitrosamines, having an H. pylori or Helicobacter pylori infection. This is a bacteria that infects the stomach. So having a chronic infection, especially, is going to increase the risk for having gastric cancer and also increase the risk for other things like gastric ulcers. Tobacco smoking is also another risk factor for stomach cancer and having chronic gastritis or chronic inflammation of the stomach all increases the risk for gastric cancer. Now in the next upcoming slides, we're going to talk about some common signs and symptoms of gastric cancer and especially some particular characteristic special signs and symptoms we see with gastric cancer when it has metastasized. So we'll talk about those later on in this lesson. Now, before we talk about the signs and symptoms, it's important to note that early gastric cancer is going to be often asymptomatic, meaning that there's no symptoms at all. So again, we mentioned this is a late presenting cancer. Oftentimes, patients may have early stages of gastric cancer and not even know it. But when they do start to have symptoms, these are going to be some of the most common symptoms. So we're going to start off with gastrointestinal signs and symptoms of gastric cancer. The first is going to be abdominal pain. So abdominal pain is going to be due to growth of the cancer within the stomach, which presses on surrounding abdominal structures and the stomach itself causing pain. So it's going to be due to cancer within the stomach tissue, infiltrating the stomach tissue, and also pressing on surrounding structures in the abdomen. And it's often going to be a persistent pain. So that's going to be something that occurs in gastric cancer. Another important symptom of gastric cancer is weight loss. So due to the cancer's growth within the stomach, the stomach lumen or the opening of the stomach reduces in size. So this will often lead to a decreased appetite. Patient doesn't feel very hungry, so they're not going to eat as much and this will lead to weight loss. So it's going to be a non-specific weight loss. It's going to be weight loss that the patient wasn't trying to achieve. So it's often going to be a weight loss over many months. The patient becomes thinner and thinner and it's going to be again due to the cancer's growth in the stomach, reducing the luminal size of the stomach. So it reduces the appetite of the patient, but also because the cancer is diverting nutrients away from the patient. And this weight loss can become so severe later on in the disease that it can lead to severe fatigue and something we call anonition, which is this severe fatigue, very poor, low energy due to being very thin and malnourished. Another gastrointestinal symptom we can see is early satiety. So this early satiety goes along with the weight loss we just mentioned. So the early satiety is going to lead to a reduced appetite and postprandial fullness. Postprandial fullness simply means that after a patient eats, they become or they feel very full. So they can eat very small amounts of food and be full after eating small amounts. So that's going to be early satiety. They are satiated earlier than appropriate or earlier than expected. Again, this is due to that stomach mass reducing the space within the stomach. You can think of it that way. So if there's a big mass inside the stomach. We cannot put much food in there before we feel very full. So that's also going to be a cause of the weight loss we talked about previously. Another important symptom of gastric cancer is nausea and vomiting. So the cancerous mass in the stomach can press on the stomach and surrounding structures leading to nausea and, and vomiting may occur as well. So nausea and sometimes vomiting but especially nausea, that's going to be a common symptom of gastric cancer. We can also see indigestion occurring as well, indigestion or dyspepsia. So this is a feeling as though food is just sitting in your stomach. Again, that's due to that cancerous mass within the stomach. We can also see issues with dysphagia. Dysphagia is going to be difficulty swallowing. 
So in some cases, depending on the location of the cancer in the stomach, can lead to issues with food feeling like it gets stuck in your esophagus. So it feels like the food gets trapped. And again, that's due to that mass in the stomach. Again, it depends on the location in the stomach where you know we may feel that the food's not getting past the mass. So again, that depends on where the mass is located in the stomach. In some cases, it may be closer to the esophagus or the lower esophageal sphincter. So again, that depends on where the mass is located in the stomach. It may feel in some cases where the food is simply stuck or trapped in the esophagus. We can also see hematemesis. So hematemesis is going to be vomiting up blood. This is going to be due to bleeding within the stomach from weak cancerous vessels. So weak blood vessels, the cancer utilizes to gain its nourishment. And those blood vessels will be weaker. They can break. They can cause bleeding in the stomach or the mass itself can bleed. This all can lead to blood in the stomach and the patient can feel nauseous and vomit and they can vomit up blood. That is hematemesis. And in some cases, bleeding can be significant. Later on in the disease progression, the hematemesis can become more and more severe. There can be more and more bleeding from the cancer's vessels. We can also see melina as well in some patients. So melina is going to be black, tarry, smelly stool. And traditionally, melina is going to be due to an upper gastrointestinal bleed. The stomach is in the upper gastrointestinal tract. So what happens is if the patient doesn't vomit up the blood, they're still having bleeding in the stomach. But instead of vomiting up the blood, they end up digesting the blood. And the digested hemoglobin from the blood turns black. And the stool can become black and tarry and especially very smelly. And again, that's from digested blood. So those are the gastrointestinal symptoms in gastric cancer. Those are going to be the most common symptoms we're going to see with gastric cancer. The next symptoms we're going to talk about are involving lymph nodes. And oftentimes these are going to be related to metastases of the cancer. So the cancer ends up metastasizing and ends up into lymph nodes and other parts of the body. So one of the lymph nodes that can be affected with metastatic gastric cancer is the Virchow's node. So Virchow's node is going to be the left supraclavicular node. So if we were to look at this diagram here, this is the supraclavicular area. So it's above the clavicle, supraclavicular, and it's going to be on the left side, and it's going to be this mass on the left supraclavicular area. Again, this is due to metastasis from stomach cancer. Another important lymph node that can be affected from metastatic gastric cancer is going to be Sister Mary Joseph node. So the Sister Mary Joseph node is going to be the periumbilical lymph node, so a lymph node in and around the umbilicus or the belly button. This lymph node generally drains the abdomen and the pelvis, so it's going to end up draining the stomach. So if there's cancer that ends up leaving the stomach and can get into this node and cause the sister Mary Joseph node, and this can become enlarged and prominent in gastric cancer. So those are the lymph nodes that can be affected in gastric cancer, but there are other parts or other locations in the body where gastric cancer can metastasize to. So some of these include the Blum shelf or Bloom shelf. So the Bloom shelf is going to be in this area here. So it's going to be in females and behind the uterus. So it's gastric cancer metastasis to the rectouterine pouch. This is also known as the pouch of Douglas. So that is one of the locations where gastric cancer can metastasize to. We can also see something called Krukenberg tumor. So Krukenberg tumor is going to be where the gastric cancer metastasizes to the ovaries. So it's going to be where the gastric cancer metastasizes to both ovaries. So it occurs bilaterally. Now, gastric cancer can also metastasize to the liver or surrounding structures of the liver, leading to particular signs and symptoms. These include jaundice. So jaundice is going to be a yellowing of the skin in eye sclera or the whites of the eyes. If the eye sclera becomes yellowed in the coloration or if there's a jaundice of eye sclera, that is known as scleral icterus. And this jaundice or scleral icterus is due to liver infiltration, so metastasis to the liver, which would be intrahepatic, meaning that it's involving or inside the liver, or it is due to obstruction of the biliary tree, which would be extrahepatic. So either the gastric cancer can metastasize to the liver, leading to jaundice, or it can metastasize in and around the biliary tree, leading to obstruction, and that would be extrahepatic. Either of these would lead to an increased level of bilirubin in the blood. Bilirubin is that yellow pigment that causes the yellowing of the skin and the whites of the eyes. And that would more specifically lead to hyperbilirubinemia, which is high levels of bilirubin in the blood. Another finding we can see with metastasis to the liver is ascites. So ascites is going to look like this. It's going to be a fluid-filled abdomen. So it's going to be your abdomen full of peritoneal fluid, Again, this is due to metastases to the liver, causing liver damage and or failure. And ultimately, this is due to portal hypertension, which is 
a high pressure within the portal system. This leads to a leaking out of fluid into the abdominal space or into the peritoneal space, leading to a large collection of peritoneal fluid in the abdomen. And this can also be due to reduced albumin as well from the liver damage. Albumin is produced in the liver. If there's a lot of liver tissue that's been damaged, it's not going to be able to produce enough albumin. That can also lead to ascites and peripheral edema as well. We can also see hepatomegaly. So hepatomegaly is going to be an enlargement of the liver. This is again due to liver infiltration, and this can contribute to the jaundice we talked about before due to obstruction. And we can also see bowel obstruction in general. So bowel obstruction can occur in gastric cancer either due to obstruction of the gastric outlet, so you essentially block off the gastric outlet so nothing can get through the stomach and pass the gastric outlet, or it can involve the small bowel, so somewhere in the small bowel, if there's a large enough mass in the stomach or in the surrounding structures, and it presses on the small bowel, this can lead to a small bowel obstruction. So we can see signs and symptoms of bowel obstruction. These include obstipation and constipation. We can see issues with increased nausea and vomiting and reduced bowel sounds. So all of those are signs and symptoms of a bowel obstruction. And because of metastases, we can also see pleural effusion as well. So pleural effusion is going to be fluid in and around the lungs, and this is going to lead to particular signs and symptoms, including dyspnea or shortness of breath and crackles on auscultation. When a physician or healthcare provider auscultates or uses their stethoscope to listen to your lung sounds, they can hear crackling sounds. So that's going to indicate fluid in the lungs or in the pleural space. And that is going to be some particular findings in metastatic gastric cancer. We can also see perineoplastic syndromes occurring in gastric cancer, leading to particular skin findings like lesser Trelaw sign and malignant acanthosis nigricans. If you want more information on those perineoplastic syndromes of gastric cancer, please check out my lesson on that topic. And if you haven't already, please like and subscribe for more lessons like this one. And as always, thanks so much for watching and hope to see you next time.